Hello my loves, boy do I have a fantastic juicy little video for you today. If you struggle with negative loops and or their resulting panic and anxiety attacks, definitely keep on watching. What's up guys, my name is Savannah. I teach modern hippies how to live a more natural and healthy lifestyle through mindfulness and science. Like I said, today I've got a lot of great tips for you and relatable little bits. First, a little story time of my first panic attack where I was diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder and went to the freaking hospital. Then my best tips for dealing with panic attacks before, during, and after. And finally, how to get out of those negative loops that spiral you into anxiety and panic attacks. Before we dive right in, consider taking a hashtag self-care moment and signing up for my free anxiety killing masterclass down below. Go check it out. It's free. If you have anxiety, if you have panic, if you find yourself being caught in negative loops all the time, it's for you. It's free. I created it. It's awesome. Check it out. So when I was 16, I started really developing anxiety as I got into like harder classes. I rose up in ranks on my varsity team and I'm actually a quite neurodiverse person and not knowing that or knowing why it was different from everybody or how to cope with the different sensory issues that I have led into me starting to build up anxiety. And of course, at the time, I was only 16, the mental health movement wasn't really moving and I just didn't know what was going on. I thought that everybody was panicky and anxious all the time. I do also suffer from migraines and one day while I was having a migraine, if you have migraines then you know there's like an auric phase where you kind of can't really see for like the first 30 minutes of the migraine. So I was already kind of like dissociated from reality because I couldn't see and like I was starting to feel pain and migraines are just so terrible. And I started to actually have a fight with my boyfriend at the time who was not someone I would want to see my daughter with. And he, he started yelling at me and because I was so disconnected from reality at that moment, plus having anxiety and not knowing what it was this sent me into like a full-blown panic attack and I also just talking about all the health problems I have I also had heart problems I was born with like a really defective heart had 11 heart surgeries and if you've ever had a panic attack then you know it feels like you are literally dying a lot of people confuse them for heart attacks so I'm like disoriented from reality um, my boyfriend at the time is yelling at me I'm feeling all the stress and anxiety from that and I go into this panic attack and I believe in my heart and I, I truly thought that I was having a heart attack and dying. Like just out of nowhere, I was like, I'm dying. I have to go to the hospital. I have to go to the hospital right now. Take me to the hospital. So he takes me to the hospital. I get in, I'm like in the ER evaluation room and I forget how to speak English. Spanish is actually a language that I learned along with English. I went to a bilingual school for grades like pre-K through fourth grade and I don't know. I'm very happy that I lived in Florida at the time and the staff spoke Spanish because I just forgot English. Like my brain was like, yeah, we don't throw that out. We don't need that anymore. I got admitted and he wasn't allowed back there because he was obviously making me more nervous. And they took my vitals and they were like, okay, you're not having a heart attack. You're having a panic attack. And I'm like, what's that? And they told me about it and how the nervous system kind of like signals to you that everything is terrible and not okay as a result of an anxiety disorder and makes you feel like you're dying it's like pure panic is coursing through your veins if you have panic attacks you know what i'm talking about it's literally the worst so i got my hospital gown and they gave me a fat xanax it's the only time i've ever taken xanax in my life actually and let me tell you it was awesome don't do it though don't do it it's just a band-aid you need to actually solve what's causing your anxiety problems and you know sometimes people need medication on the path to solving it like it's too intense they need to like dull it down as they go down the path the path but go down the path don't just like take medicine that's going to mask your problem instead of getting to the root cause don't mask the symptoms fix the issue anyways um, my parents then showed up and I was super chill <laughs> everything was fine and I got diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder and here I am at 25 almost 10 years later 
later. Anxiety has been probably the biggest demon I've had to deal with in my life. And I know that sounds dramatic and like maybe even common, but a, you know, it is common. A lot of people do struggle with it, but there's just so many ways that it can manifest, that anxiety can manifest in your life. It can be physical, mental, even spiritual. Maybe you avoid things. Maybe you have like knots in your shoulders from being so tense. It truly is a disease and I'm very happy that the mental health movement is going because it needs to be treated right along with it because mind and body are obviously inextricably linked. So here are my best tips for dealing with an oncoming panic attack before, during, and after. And you'll know that it's coming because you feel that just feeling of dread creeping up your spine. And briefly, I wanna open up the floor for you guys. What are your best anxiety tips, panic attack tips, negative loop tips? If you have something to share with us, something comes to mind, just drop it down below. If you feel the panic is coming, stand up tall and notice your breathing. If you have quick, shallow breaths that is signaling to your brain the fight or flight response when you will panic. The first thing that you want to do is enact the parasympathetic nervous system and here's how you do that. Take in a deep, 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 deep inhalation and tense every single muscle in your body as hard as you can and hold the tension in the breath for as long as you can. About eight to 10 seconds. And then release all the tension from your body and exhale slowly. Again, eight to 10 seconds. This is going to factory reset your body and it take your panic from like a creeping up to a 10 down to like a three. And you can repeat this as needed. You can do this like three, five, 10 times in a row. It is going to help so much. You're helping the mind by resetting the body. After you've done this and you've calmed down a bit, go draw a bath. If you have a bathtub, go put in the plug, turn it to the right temperature, and run it. For extra credit, add essential oils and Epsom salt. Epsom salt is really great for anxiety. It's magnesium chloride, I believe, or is it yeah, magnesium sulfate, magnesium chloride. I know it's magnesium is like the big salt in there and that is just gonna help your body release tension. Light your favorite candle, turn on 432 Hertz, which you can find for free here on YouTube. And as the bath is drying, just take a break, take it easy. And when it's ready, get in, listen to the 432 Hertz music, feel the warmth and the relaxation melt into your body and this is really gonna help bring you down so basically you're at the edge and by doing the tensing and the breathing exercise and then getting into a bath you're kind of like nipping the panic attack at the bud that's what i do it helps so much as someone who has chronically suffered from panic attacks for over 10 years if you are home and it's available to you, do that. But pretty much you can do the tensing and breathing exercise anywhere and it helps so, so, so much. Also, get a weighted blanket, trust me. So now let's talk about preventative measures. So we talked about before, during, and after what to do to help yourself out when you're starting to panic, but let's talk about what gets you to the panic in the first place and how we can avoid that. This week at Blissful, we've been talking about negative loops. If you don't follow the TikTok, Instagram, Facebook group, by the way, definitely follow links down below. So in order to not approach where we're getting into anxiety and panic attacks, we need to get out of the negative loops that are spiraling us there in the first place. How do we do that? Let's look at what negative loops look like in the first place. So we mess up, it sucks. We resolve to change and do better next time. Next time comes around and out of habit, we don't approve like we wanted to. This makes us become angry with ourselves for not improving and judge ourselves for never doing anything right. This therefore directs upset and negative energy at the dynamic that we wanted to improve. And so when the next opportunity comes, we mess up and repeat the cycle. I like to use this metaphor when I talk about getting out of negative loops. Imagine that you decide that you wanna lose some body fat and that you're gonna be on a diet and that you're not gonna eat pie. Pie's like your favorite thing. And you're only gonna have maybe like a few bites a week. So you're like, all right, I'm on this diet. I'm gonna gonna do well. Dinner time comes around, there's pie. And out of habit, like you always do, you eat the pie. And afterwards you feel terrible and you judge yourself and you become angry with yourself and you you think, why can't I ever do anything right? Why do I always betray myself? And so you throw away the idea of the diet completely. And then eventually you decide that you want to lose weight, restart the cycle. The issue here is not that you ate the pie. The issue is that you judged yourself, became angry at yourself, and directed negative energy towards the situation that you're trying to correct and yourself. Because if I had eaten the pie and I said, hmm, you know, I messed up, but I'm gonna try again tomorrow. Then I will continue doing my best, trying my best, knowing I'm not perfect, knowing that it's okay 
to mess up sometimes and not judging myself for being human, then I will continue every night doing my best, making my best effort because I'm not judging myself. Whether I do it or do not eat the pie, because I'm not judging myself, I will continue to improve gradually. And let me tell you, success doesn't look like this. It looks like this. <laughs> So the most important thing that you need to know about getting out of any type of negative loop, no matter what it is, is to self-observe, know that you are in the loop and how you are directing negative energy at yourself within the loop, and then to not judge yourself. Observe what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what your actions are in something that feels negative in your life that seems to repeat, that you can't seem to stop repeating. And when you feel the most negative, when you do something bad, when you have a bad thought, when you feel terrible, don't judge yourself, don't judge the feeling, don't judge the thought, don't judge the action. Just let it be and do your best next time. I'm gonna link below a book related to this subject called Self Observation by Red Hawk. It has changed my life, it's changed a lot of my clients' lives. Go check it out if you're interested in stopping the negative loops in your life. Really powerful, it's only like 110 pages. Everything you've learned so far in this video and more is included in my free anxiety killing masterclass. Go sign up below. Next week, I am talking about body image. Whoa. I have a whole lot to say as both a spiritually inclined person and a certified fitness trainer of six years. I've heard at this point thousands of people, especially young teen girls, talk about how much they hate their body, what they wish they could change about it, asking me like, hey, can you do, can you play your bowls to make me taller? Can you make me shorter? Can you make my nose different? So we're gonna take a deep dive into body image from a spiritual viewpoint. And we're also gonna look at it from a consumerism viewpoint. There's a lot here I wanna unpack and have you guys realize for yourself and how you, you, your body. Subscribe so you don't miss it. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. And if you wanna learn more about how to live a more holistic and healthy lifestyle, start by watching one of these two videos right here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video helps. Don't forget to sign up for my free masterclass and I love you. Have a blissful day.